welcome back lovely people thank you for joining me again and we have announcements to make so your girl has renamed her channel you are rocking now with queen bless tv yes i said it queen bless tv now you follow me on my social media you already know that my handle is queen bless anyway and i felt it appropriate to go ahead and have my channel the same name as well so you already know what to do go ahead and share guess i said it share on your twitter on your facebook your instagram whatever you have that there's been a name change and to go ahead and hit the subscribe okay you already know that you love me you already know i'm gonna do what i gotta do to make y'all entertained or have y'all entertained so just go ahead and share the love spread the love all right so you already know by the title what we doing here today is a black girl magic book haul so these are books by black authors the main characters are black girls or black men just everything black okay y'all and i felt super inspired to do this just because i know for me growing up having like a black lead in any book i read wasn't a thing and so i never saw myself envision myself could really relate with the character in the books i read but now we're in a time where we on and popping okay black girl magic black boy joy it's on and it's going it's not gonna stop so i'm gonna give y'all a list of things or more so books that i have read already and then i plan on reading so it's gonna be split into two uh, it's going to be 10 books for each section. And so I'm going to give you like short descriptions because there is a lot of books uh, for each one. And then I'll also link everything down below to where you can access those books. Most of it will be Amazon because your girl loves a deal and everything on Amazon yeah, is a deal. So let's go ahead and get forward. And then before we continue, because I know this is going to be distracting. My nails broke, y'all. My nails broke. So just want to that out there my nails broke so don't mind it everything else is on the popping though okay we cute we cute boo we cute but let's go ahead and get started all right so the first book that we're gonna start with is an oldie but a goodie it is we're going to need more wine we're going to need more wine is by your girl gabrielle union and it's her memoir and so you already know she is most i want to say most known for but my favorite movie that she's ever been with been in is a uh, bring it on okay and so you know the type of uh interactions that she has with us like on social media feels like she's a girl on the block she's just goofy she's funny and whatnot you read this book gabrielle Yoon has been through stuff y'all she has been through it and she is just amazing okay this book um entitles of course is her memoir so when she was a kid to growing up to like moving and then getting into acting her relationship her different relationships and everything that she has gone through in her life so i definitely recommend taking um uh, de definitely recommend reading that book okay loved it one of my favorite memoirs okay so you already know this book is a given if i didn't put this in this list it's just like bless blessing what are you doing and also if you haven't read this book or even watch the movie what are you doing okay so next book needs no introduction but of course i'm going to introduce it it's the hate you give so the hate you give is by angie thomas and so the premise of this book it follows the main character star and star goes to a party where she meets her childhood best friend and you know they catching up whatever the party gets shot up unfortunately so they dip they go they leave and so as they're leaving, going, they get, of course, stopped by the police. And this book really reflects the realities of our world right now. And so, of course, the unfortunate narrative is that her best friend gets shot and killed in front of her. And, and basically, the book is following the aftermath of it, of her having to deal with being a person that witnesses death and, you know, dealing with if she wants to move forward and speak about it. And also what comes into play is the fact that she's kind of leaving, living two lives. So one is where she goes to an all white school and she's like, you know, that star, like doesn't cuss, doesn't slang, doesn't give them a reason to like label her, label her as black, I guess you could say. And then there's star at home where her family's black, neighborhood's black, you know, everything is black. And so she has to like navigate through all of that. And it is a heart-wrenching book 
it goes through a lot. If you haven't seen it, the movie, if you haven't read the book, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to go ahead and read it right now. Like now. All right, y'all. This, this is my, my favorite book. This is the book that I needed as a little kid growing up, okay? Now, one of my favorite books of all time is Harry Potter. Love it, I'm a Hufflepuff. The world itself, like everything, and then like second to that would be like the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan, okay? This book is like the love child, okay? Because it incorporates all the things that, you know, I love as a little kid, like fantasy and like mytholo mythology and whatnot. So this book is Children of Blood and Bone whew, by Tommy Adeyemi. Okay, look y'all, <laughs> gotta take a minute. I love this book and you will love it too, okay? So, okay, okay, let me backtrack, let me backtrack. I'm getting too excited, <laughs> I'm getting too excited. So Children of Blood and Bone is about a uh, uh, Zeli Adebola and basically where it's uh, centered it's uh, in Nigeria and it's like Yoruba land so it's the city or the um, land of Orisha and land of Orisha used to have magic so there are people who had magic there were magi and then people who didn't have magic and so the king who did not have magic became very fearful very um, angry very just ignorant, ignorant, woefully ignorant of how the Magi, the Magi people were. And of course, and like, there's good and bad people who are Magi and there's good and bad people who aren't Magi. And just, unfortunately, the bad people got to him and now his whole perception of Magi people is just warped. So because of it, he basically killed off magic and killed off anybody who has magic. And so Zeli, her mom had magic. And so she was one of the people who were killed. And so she was like a little girl, I think, seven, maybe younger, don't remember, but yeah. So that's what happens. This happens before the story. Now the story is, she's a little bit grown now. And the thing is the way that the, um, I guess the setup is that by the time you turn 13, when there was magic, then that's when you would actually become a Magi and whatnot. But right now, um, if you're not a Magi, a, you're called a diviner, if I remember correctly. Y'all, I love this book, okay? I love it so much. And so, but now you're 13, there's no magic in the land because the kingdom killed it off. So basically the story is falling Zelly and then, you know, a group of other people as they fight to bring magic back. <sighs> y'all, it's amazing. And within the magic, there's different clans. So there comes the aspect of like, you know, the Harry Potter, Harry Potter, different houses and whatnot. There's multiple different clans that have to deal with like, you know, different elements and just like things. If you read the book, then you know, I'm in the Reaper clan, go to her website, take the test. I already have my collector's edition. <sighs> and I don't buy books, y'all, because I listen to audiobooks. That's my thing. I got my library card on and popping. I bought this book. Y'all need to read this book. It's amazing. It's uh, it's a trilogy. And so the second book is coming out December 3rd. Go ahead and buy the first one if you don't have it. And then pre-order your second one. Okay. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next <laughs> next book. It's another memoir, y'all. It is The Year of Yes by Miss Shonda Rhimes. Who, Miss Shonda, look, if you don't know who Miss Shonda is, I don't know what you're doing, okay? She is the creator of Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, and a whole lot of other things. Netflix, she has her own like executive creative thing going on called Shondaland, like, Miss Shonda is doing the thing, okay? <laughs> She's doing the thing. And so this memoir is basically entailing that um, her year of yes, because the premise is that she says no. She doesn't like to do things that are out of her comfort zone and that she doesn't like, she thinks that she's gonna fail at. And so I believe it was like her niece or her cousin or somebody who says, why do you always say no? And then, you know, she got to thinking. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna do a year of yes. And so the memoir is a reflection of how her life changed, like, and for the better. She experienced new things. So you really get, like, an insight on how Miss Shonda <laughs> has lived her life, okay? And then 
She also talks about her different characters from her different shows. Y'all, I definitely recommend it because it helped me put my life in perspective because the thing is, I'm the opposite. I always say yes. And so I say yes to things that I don't want to do. So even though like her year, it was like, or for her, she was the oldest person that said no. It kind of in retrospect taught me how to say, um, I'm sorry, in her year, taught her how to say yes instead of saying no. It taught me how to say no instead of saying yes. I don't know if that makes sense, but y'all need to read it anyway, okay? Read it, get your life together. Mishana Goddess, got it. Okay. <laughs> I got another memoir for y'all and you were you know what I would be doing black girls around the world a disgrace if I did not have this book in the lineup okay so the book is from our forever first lady okay forever first lady okay Michelle Obama's becoming <laughs> who y'all when I tell you when you get this book take notes take notes notes this book is about miss obama a forever first lady from growing up south side of chicago to going to harvard princeton working a law firm meeting that our forever first president and last president barack obama and then you know their relationship and him getting into politics and then her trying to actually figure out what career she wants to go into because she wasn't feeling satisfied and then you know her navigation between Barack Obama's like getting into politics and her not really liking it and then him becoming president, her becoming first lady and then her struggles like with having kids and just everything. And it is just such a beautiful look into her life. And you know, I recommend listening to the audiobook. And if I didn't mention earlier, all these books that I've already read, I've listened to the audiobooks. And I listen to audiobooks because first off, I'm always on the go. So I can't, I usually don't have time to actually sit down and read something. So listening to audiobooks makes it like, first off, a better experience for me because with the memoirs, typically the authors are re are reading it. So Miss Michelle Obama was talking to me, y'all. She was telling me about her life. But read it, read it, read it. You will get so much out of this book and all the memoirs and whatnot, like, read it. That's all I got to say. Do it. All right, so The Poet X. Oh yeah, I love this book. This book was beautifully written, okay? So The Poet X is written by Elizabeth Acevedo. It's written in like lyric poem form. And so this book, I highly recommend listening to the audiobook because like the rhythm, like, you know, it gets the rhythm down for you. So listen to the audiobook. It's about um, a young Afro Latina girl, and not the name. Her name escapes me right now, but listen to her book, y'all. Okay, it's basically about her just like coming into her home and like writing poems and rapping and just trying to express herself. Whereas like from her mom's side, she, her mom doesn't want it, doesn't like it, and it's basically like a coming of age story. Like her mom and her um, and herself clash a lot, and it's. It's, it's a lot going on and so I love the book I really love the fact that it was written in verse and I recommend listening to it before you actually like read it but you know whatever rocks your boat definitely definitely love this book it's great and then she has some other books coming out y'all need to check this book out well read black girl okay well well read black girl so well I well read black girl is a collection of short stories like an anthology and whatnot so like fun fact with the book itself so well read black girl was actually like a book club i believe it started in brooklyn new york by gloria edden um i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing it but so basically um it started at a small book club rose to this like national thing and then homegirl made a collection of short stories of different art, the authors and whatnot. So there is a story, there is something that you can relate to in there and it has like different references to like different things that are spoken there so that you can reference back to if you need to. So I definitely recommend reading this book. Like it's just like a thing to do on a black girl magic, black girl reading list. Like if you're not reading it, what you're doing? 
Next look, see, if you're somebody who likes the classics and whatnot and, and likes a little remix, then I definitely recommend, highly recommend this book. I loved it. It was a cute little romance story. So the next book is Pride by Evie Zaboy. And so basically it's a remix on Pride and Prejudice. And so if you know the premise of Pride and Prejudice, then you know how the story basically goes. It's a cute romance story. So there's two different flip families. So in this book, um, oh gosh, and I forgot the characters' names, but you know, there's Afro-Latina, Latin, Latin family that's living across the street. And then other side of the street, there was this like, I guess, broken down like apartment or plot of land that gets built up and so this family that comes for money moves in across the street and it's just really like a weird not a weird situation but it's like the early beginnings of gentrification but the thing is the family's black <laughs> so it's just really weird to see like this really nice house extravagant house next to like you know all the like the brown stones that are kind of older you know in the black neighborhood and so Basically what happens, there is two sisters, I mean, it's a whole family, but two sisters are kind of like the main focus. And so and there's two sons from the other family. And so the oldest sister, oldest brother, they they hit it off, blah, 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 all Gucci and whatnot. It's the other sister who's younger and the younger brother who are just like, is that what you're doing here? Like, mm. And so basically, you know, don't start off right, but of course, of course, a little romance starts to spark, and it's basically just a navigation of like, you know, first black identity, mm -hmm. and you know, being like from the higher or wealthier wealthier class of black people, and not, and then you know, move into a neighborhood that isn't part of like the one percent, and then just them trying to navigate through their own feelings with each other, and then homegirl is trying to go to school because she's mad smart, like going to university so the book's really cute so love it's a nice like nice romance story um definitely recommended it. it was a quick read listen to me and i will listen to it again so definitely check that one out all right so we're in the second to last book of the books that i have already read so this one is called black enough so it's an other anthology of short stories and this one is edited by eb zaboy and there's other like names that you might know of. There's Tochi Onyabuchi, um, Renee Watson, a couple others I can't remember. But basically what the book encompasses is being black enough in America. Um, and just like, you know, the stereo stereotypical, like in the box perceptions of how a black person should be, what you should like, what you should aim for, what you should aspire for and whatnot. And so there's a book in here, or not a book, there's a short story in here for everybody. And I, I highly recommend reading it just because it really helps break down the barriers that, you know, society has built around the black person, the black identity. And we don't got time. Black people can be whatever, okay? And not the stereotypical thing that we, or stereotypical box we have to fall into. So I definitely recommend reading it, okay? Read the book last book that i've read okay so this book this is something that i don't typically read if you haven't noticed by now i like memoirs and like fantasy okay those are the books that i typically gravitate towards this book is something that was out of my like things that i care about and you think is i was just trying to expand the things that i, I was reading and I was seeing that black authors were also, you know, expanding the categories or genres that they were writing in. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and give this book a chance. So the last book on the list is Allegedly by Tiffany Jackson. This book, look, this is like a thriller, like mystery type thing. And those are the type of books that she does write, like psychological, like you think you know what's going on? I thought I knew what was going on. I didn't know what's going on, y'all. This book, <laughs> I thought I figured it out because I was like, okay, you know what? I got my little criminal minds on. I know what's going on. <laughs> I didn't know what's going on at all. This book will make you think that you know what is up, what is down, what is my left, <laughs> and what is my right. You don't. I, I finished the book and I was just like, wow. I really don't know what's going on. 
what is life sis had me shook this book has me shook and i can't wait to read her next book it's been out for a minute uh, Mon uh monday's not here or i believe or monday's not coming i can't wait to read that book because i already read the summary about it it's about um these two girls who are best friends one of and one of the girl's name, the best friend's name is Monday, and she goes missing, and everybody acting like, what are you talking about? There ain't nobody named Monday. So I really wanna see what's going on with that one. But definitely recommend, if you're trying to expand the type of books that you read, I recommend reading that one. And you know, it's just, it's gonna have you shook, sis. Have you shook. All right, so we're going to start on books that I have not read and plan to read. These are 10 books. These books have either already been out for a minute, I think it's just a, like one or two, have come out this month, so September, or coming out in October. And I plan to read all these books before the year is up. And you should The too. first book is Kingdom of Souls by Raina Barron. So the premise of this book, and bear with me because I haven't read these books, I don't know the story, so let me just go ahead and get my little notebook and let you know what's going on. Okay, so <laughs> for this book, so Kingdom of Souls is about main character Arya. She is born in a family of witch doctors, and so she's a witch doctor herself. Unfortunately, she hasn't been able to call forth her powers for years now. And it has become a point or sore point for her mom who is continuously disapproving of the fact that she can't call forth her powers. So in order for her to get her powers, she resorts to some deadly stuff, black magic, witch magic stuff. And she decides that she's going to trade years of her life so that she can start using magic and whatnot. And so as the story continues or the premise or gist of it is that kids start going missing, okay? And nobody knows why. And then the Demon King starts stirring. So everybody's like, what's going on? Okay, so I'm excited to read this book. This book is set in uh, Africa. I don't know what part of Africa, but it's in Africa. And it's kind of, um, it gives you children of blood and bone vibes from the like reviews that I've read. So I'm super excited to read this book. I already got it in my Amazon cart. It's on and popping y'all, on and popping. All right, so next book we have is Slay by Brittany Morris. So this book, I'm excited to read this book. I've heard some really good things about it and it's um, kind of outside of the realm of the books I already read now. So the premise of Slay, if you don't already know or know, um, read about it it's kind of ready player one meets the hate you give type deal that's what the reviews say and so basically it's about 17 year old kiera johnson who again is kind of like living the two lives type thing with um same thing as star where she goes to this all-white school this is educated this is smart she's an honor she's a math tutor and well, she's a game developer and that's where her second life comes to so, no, and nobody knows that she's a game developer. And so she's created this game called Slay, so a title of the book. And basically you get to play as Nubian personas. Now what they get to do in the game, not really sure. I'm assuming it's like the same type of deal with Ready Player One, but you know, when I read the book, I'll find out. And then something tragic happens, somebody dies and it has to deal with the game. And so they're trying to say that the game itself is racist or anti-white, and um this anonymous person is trying to sue her and whatnot and so basically kira is trying to make sure that her game her livelihood and nobody gonna take that from sis mm -mm. and so basically it's just to her trying to i guess salvage and make sure not salvage but make sure that her game is good and whatnot and from every like all the reviews i've seen like you pick this book up and you're not gonna put it down <laughs> so i recommend you do it when you got time but i'm super excited to read this book mm. let's move on to the next okay people so the next book that we have is the water dancer by tana hisi coates now if you haven't heard about tana hisi coates you've been living under a rock and that's all i gotta say he wrote the book, uh, We Were Eight Years in Power, or We Were Eight Years in Power, and Between the World and Me, he's an um, activist, writes articles and whatnot, and Black Boy Joy, all the way. 
okay all the way and so this book um they say it's like his de debut novel because the books that he has read or written have been more so non-fiction biography memoirs type thing and this is like um historical fiction fantasy type setting so basically the book follows um Hiram Walker who was born in slavery and his mother was sold away and so he doesn't remember his mother at all but and loses his memories and because of it he gains these mysterious powers and so a few, few years later he almost drowns in a river and his powers save him and because he almost drowned he's like I need to get up out of here he needs to go has an urgency to leave and so basically the book is following uh his story with escaping the south and going to the north and it's just like a whole lot of crazy stuff apparently is going on so i'm really excited to read this i already love tana hasey coates like his like um non-fiction stuff so i'm really excited to read his fiction historical fiction and whatnot and typically i'm not really about like reading about slavery or dealing with it because you know it's like a sore spot but i feel this necessary so y'all read it too tell me how you like it on to the next the next book I'm, I'm kind of sorry about it's called opposite of always so opposite of always is like a romance novel with a little bit a little bit of like fantasy sci-fi type thing just kind of thrown in there so and the book is by justin a reynolds yes justin a reynolds and so the book basically falls to people there's a uh, jack and I lied, Jake and Kate, <laughs> here we go. So the book follows Jake and Kate and they meet at a party, they hit it off real quickly, like, you know, okay, I'm feeling you, I'm feeling you, you feeling me, you feeling me, like, they get on and pop in and, you know, they develop a relationship, he's, um, she's meeting his friends and it's just like, you know, a great relationship. And then all of a sudden, Kate dies and she dies. And so basically what happens is that Jake is transported back to the moment that he meets her. And so he does not, he's at first just like, what's going on? But then he realizes, he's like, okay, I'm back. I can save her. And so that's basically what happens. And he starts to believe in the fact that time travels so that he can like save Kate because, you know, that's his, that's his girl, his boo. Like they had something special going on. But as y'all, I hope y'all heard the butterfly effect. <laughs> you go back to the past and you change something, something, something gonna mess it up, okay? Something gonna mess up. And so basically that's what's going on. He goes back, he tries to save Kate and then something, uh, something tragic, how another tragic thing happens. And so it's a cute romance novel. I've heard, I've had heard really good reviews about it. So I'm really excited to read it because you know, the little time traveling thing that's what that's what i like i want to see like you know what potentially could happen so read the book all right y'all so the next book is she would be king that's it all right yes she would be king by way gay way to more i hope i said that right so she would be king basically follows three stories or not three stories but three people so there is one from liberia one from virginia and one from jamaica and basically these three people all have special gifts or powers and so they uh come together at some point in time location and basically where they are there is tension going on with the african-american community and the indigenous tribes and they have to use their powers in order to or gifts in order to relieve these tensions that are going on and so that's basically i don't say basically the premise of the book but it has a lot of like folklore and like older stories and whatnot one of the reviews i saw um said that there was like a folklore story that she heard as a child and so you know, I'm really excited to see this, like, or see this. I'm really excited to read this. Um, if y'all haven't noticed, again, I like fantasy, magical realism, and this definitely falls into the category. And it's the author's debut novel, and all the reviews that I have read for it have been nothing but amazing things. So again, if you in the realm of you love books that are in, like magical realism, fantasy, this is a book for you. Next book. 
The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. So this book is uh, fiction, just like regular fiction. And it follows the story of two girls who come together. The first one, her name is Audrey, and Audrey is Trinidadian. And so basically what happens is that Audrey, um, or Audre, gets caught kissing her secret girlfriend by her strictly religious mother. And so what happens is that she gets sent to go live in Minneapolis with her father and whatnot. And so in Minneapolis, there's another girl, Mabel. Mabel is basically trying to figure out what's going on with her relationship, her feelings and whatnot, because she has an ex and uh, Tyrell, and she's just trying to figure out, figure out how she feels about him. And also how she feels about her other friend, Jada, because of something that happened in the woods or something like that. And then basically how the girls meet is that uh, Mabel's father and Audrey's father are best friends. So they have dinner and Mabel falls hard for, uh, for Audrey and whatnot. And so basically just them, you know, figure out their feelings and whatnot. But the thing is, Mabel feeling like real sick, real ill in her body and whatnot and they figure out what's happening and she figures out and so it's kind of like a coming of age story and the girls are just trying to figure things out and how to navigate life because something serious is going on and i think i know what's going on i think i know why maybe i'm feeling sick but you know we're gonna find out when we read the book and then we can talk about it later but make sure you check the book out okay so move on to the next book so a river of royal blood by amanda joy it follows the story of Ava. She's a 16 year old princess and I think it's set in North Africa somewhere. And so basically what happened or so what's going on is that Ava was born, um, it might be Ava, it might be Eva, but she's born with this type of magic. I believe they said but blood and marrow or bone and marrow or something like that. And it's a terrible power. It hasn't been seen in eight generations by the previous or not the previous queen, but the queen from eight generations ago, Queen Rena. And basically with this power, it just brings on a whole lot of like evil and destruction. And Queen Rena, who was the queen eight generations ago, basically killed everybody off and then killed her sister so she could sit on the throne, which started the tradition of killing your sister so you could be the queen to sit on the throne. So Basically, the story follows Ava because she has to kill her sister while they're fighting each other for the throne. And the thing is, there's an assassination attempt on her life before, like, you know, they even, like, get together. And then there's, a, like, I think it's, like, a little romance story that happens in there. And so, it's just a lot going on. And Homegirl's trying to sit on the ivory throne. And I'm excited to read this because magic. On to the next. I got another magic book for y'all. Okay, so this book is Daughters of Henri. It's by Renai K. Amayo, and she's a British author. And so what I'm really excited about this book is because first off, she's Igbo, and I'm Igbo. If you couldn't tell, I'm rocking my turban because first off, Nigerian Independence Day is in a couple of days. So I was like, let me go ahead and show off for my people if y'all was wondering why. But anyways, let's keep it going. So Daughters of the Ring is about, um, so with the premise is that there was a war and the gods have fallen and the two people who are, or what's left of the gods are these two girls who are twin sisters who are separated at birth and they don't know their goddesses. One of them is living in the palace of Henry and the other one's living in a village. And so basically, it's about them coming together to, I guess, save the world or save the village because of the, I guess, the current ruler who is Eze Orichi, oh, or no, Eze Ochi, Ochi Chiri, which Eze in Igbo means king, so he's the king. And they were separated at birth because of the Eze. And so basically, they have to come together and save everything. And so I'm super excited because it's Ebo, first off. Love my Nigerian authors. 
Ebo. And I just love magical realism. I love black girl magic and this is literally black girl magic. So I believe the book is coming out soon. Y'all ready to go, y'all go ahead and order yourself a copy. And we gonna move on to the next one. All right, so we're on the second to last book. So let's, second to last book is Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. So she is the author of The Poet X that was mentioned earlier. So the story follows Imani Santiago, who her freshman year of high school, she got pregnant. And now I believe it's her senior year. And so Imani has like basically lived her life just making difficult decisions on how um, to take care of her daughter and her abu abuela and whatnot. And so she's in her senior year, she's picking her classes and it gets to a point where she can choose to be part of a culinary art, you know, class or, you know, work instead or work more hours. And so basically it's just her trying to figure out what she wants to do and make responsibilities because, you know, she does have a kid and she's trying to help take care of her abuela as well. And the thing is the girl loves to cook. Like the kitchen is her just get away, let things go space. That is her piece and whatnot and she loves to cook and so this opportunity would be amazing for her but she's just like i got a kid i have to take care of my grandma as well and it's just a lot going on for her so i definitely recommend reading this book i already started reading it and i like it so far and there's also like a cute little romance you know i'm popping in there so i'm just like okay all right let me see what you're doing so go ahead check that book out as well all right y'all we on the last book okay so the last book is war girls by tochi on your buchi and so to if you don't know tochi on tochi on your buchi he is the author of beast of the nights um and he's also an other Igbo nigerian author and so this book is giving you afrofuturism if you're into anime it's like mecha tech type thing and so basically the year is set in 2172 if i'm remembering correctly and it's a base it's a dystopian society the earth is uninhabitable which side note pause this has nothing to do with black girl magic if we don't start saving the earth this is what we're gonna be living like all right back to frame <clears throat> but living in a dystopian society where the climate has changed and the hearth is uninhabitable. Only the lucky one get to live in a space colony. So that means you need to have coins. And so if you don't have coins, that means you li you're living on the earth. And so the earth is war torn, there's political unrest. And so I'm pretty sure there's an oppressor. Um, it doesn't really state if there is, but I'm believing it's the people who live in the sky colonies or the space colonies sky colonies whatever it is they um are the ones oppressing the people who don't have coins so the sisters Oni and Ifi are dreaming of a better life and so they are fighting against the political unrest the unfair tea or pre not unfair tea i just made up a word the oppression of everything that's going on so i'm super excited i'm typically not into afro futurism like the tech and mecca and whatnot that's typically not my thing but you know i'm gonna give this one a try this one sounds real interesting so and also they ebo so i mean i'm kind of biased but yeah read it we're reading all these books together y'all all of them okay okay all right y'all so we're done with the book list i hope that y'all really enjoyed it again i was really inspired really felt that i had to share this list of books just because again when i was young there wasn't people who looked like us that were leading these books they were maybe like side characters or not even that but now we have books that represent us and so i really hope that you liked it i really hope that you enjoyed it and you're definitely going to be seeing more to me regardless if you didn't like it or not <laughs> because i love books and i love to share it and so I'm going to start doing like a big haul once a month and I probably do individual reviews every here and there. Maybe on my Instagram, maybe on my Twitter, maybe on YouTube. I don't know yet, but something's going to shake. And so thank you for rocking with me. Again, we with Queen Bless TV. Let me say it again. You rocking with 
Queen Bless TV. So make sure that you share, like, and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any book recommendations for me, go ahead, let me know. If you want me to do a review, go ahead, let me know. If you want to start a book club, go ahead and let me know because it's on and popping. 2019 almost over. We're about to start a new decade, 2020, and we're going to be well read. We're going to be educated and we're going to be living our best lives. And I also plan to expand on the different genre of books that I'm going to talk about and list because I know that a lot of books I put were fantasy and like magical realism. And that's because those are the things I love. But I'm gonna start, I'm gonna, I'm doing this for y'all. So I'm definitely gonna expand the different genres. All right, you already know what to do. I said my piece, so it's time to go because I know I talk too much. But thank you again for rocking with me. Make sure that you are sharing my videos, you are liking my videos, you are commenting on my videos, and you are subscribing to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Peace, love, and blessing.